Hey you guys, so I am um, coming to you um, today to do something that I think I should have done a very long time ago. Um, but it's, it's not a very easy thing to do. But here in the midst of what's going on with the COVID-19, I have been feeling a greater pull um, in this direction to do what I feel that God has been calling me to do. <clears throat> um, and it's to start, you know, like recording things about the Bible. Uh, recording, I wouldn't call them messages or, you know, preaching or anything like that. It's just to share what I know and what I understand um, thus far about um, scripture. But I will tell you that I set out to do this Maybe, maybe a year ago, I started a YouTube channel and, um, I don't share it on my Facebook page, but I am sharing this on my Facebook page and general, the reason why I don't share it on my um, Facebook page, the other channel that I uh, started was because the, the channel was highly political, very political cha channel. It's talking about politics and, um, in those videos, I was trying to get across to people who ever wanted to watch them some of the misinformation that you'll get from uh, media sources, all media sources, um, just to clarify some things and talked a lot about definitions, in my opinion, of some of the things that were going on that were political. When I started that channel, I didn't feel the pull per se in the political direction. However, I let it take me into that direction because <clears throat> I kind of felt a little bit more comfortable there. And not that I don't feel comfortable in the Bible and scripture. I actually feel very comfortable talking about the Bible and talking about scripture. Um, it's just that James 3, 1 says some things that kind of makes this a very difficult uh, road to travel down because people who endeavor to teach the Bible will be judged a lot more strictly than um, someone who is who is not teaching the Bible. And so um, I want to kind of ease into this. Uh, the reason that I thought that I should definitely get started and definitely not keep waiting is, number one, I can't sleep at night. <laughs> um, some of it is related to what's going on with the COVID-19, but a lot of it is related to um, I feel like I, I'm supposed to be doing something that I'm not doing. Um, if you know me, you'll know that I'm a big fan of the Bible. I am. I really love the Bible. And if you know me very well, you'll know that I have been saved from so, so much. God has um, totally restructured my life. And I'm nowhere near the person that I used to be. And that to me is the miracle of um actually giving your life over to Christ. That is what you get um, from this great struggle to turn yourself over to Christ. You get freedom. Uh, freedom from being who you once were. And I'm so grateful and tearing up right now. I'm so grateful that um, that God came into my life the way that he did. And I lived as a I went to church my whole young life. And so, but I did not apply those things that I learned in church to my life. I did not do that because uh, the world doesn't give you an easy uh, road to live in like the Bible says you should live. And so it was quite a struggle to get to a place where I would let God take control of my life and I'm so happy that I did get to that place. But in, in getting to that place, what makes it so hard in getting to that place is you tend to lose lots of things that you love along the way. And it's not just actions or or um, things that you like to do or things like those things change, but they don't necessarily change um, in a bad way. I mean, you can You'll be surprised what you can get used to. You'll be surprised how God will change your taste if you will allow him to. But um, 
You lose people whom you love. Um, because the walk changes who you are. It changes. It changes who you are. You're just not the same person. When you will strive to live the way that God has called you to live, you're not the same person. You know, you'll never be the same person when you when you start when you genuinely start that walk and you give your life over to God. But not but with that being said, I am very afraid for people. I'm afraid for the souls of people. Okay. For a couple of reasons. And I've taken some notes here because I want to try to be efficient. And um, I don't want to forget anything. The number one reason that I'm afraid is because I know that people today do not read their Bibles. They don't. And I'm afraid for people's souls because they don't read their Bibles. Because if you don't read your Bible, you, you can't know what God expects from you. And you can't have a relationship with someone whom you have not come to know intimately. I couldn't have a relationship with my husband if I never spent time with him. And we don't read our Bibles. Therefore, we don't know what they say. And we spend a lot of our time taking other people's word for what the Bible says. <laughs> um, and that's a perfect segue to what I wrote next, which is many people depend solely on their church attendance and their pastor sermons and their activities for the church to get them through. And I'm afraid for them and I'm afraid for their souls also because the things you do don't necessarily um, solidify your relationship with God. You do those things. When, when people are doing things in the church, the proper direction is because I'm saved and because I have a relationship with God and because I read my word and because I study my Bible, I do these things. You don't do these things to have the relationship. You do these things because you have the relationship. So, for example, I cook for my husband because he is my husband. Because of that relationship, I do things for my husband. I don't do those things in order to have a relationship with my husband, if that makes sense. And so I'm afraid for people who think that the doing of the things that they're doing is going to get them there. It's going to get them to heaven after this life. Because we're not living just for this life. We're living for the life to come. right? Um, and I wrote down here, many people won't ever come to know God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They won't ever get that intimate relationship with him because their idea of that intimate relationship with them has been flawed. And that goes right back to people not reading their word, not knowing who God is and not being in a relationship with him. It's a lot of us think, you know, we were baptized. I was baptized when I was 12 years old. So a lot of us think that, you know, that's, that's signed, sealed, delivered. I'm in. And that's not, that's not true. <laughs> Baptism alone does not get you in. <laughs> and a lot of people won't get to know God because maybe they tried to get to know God at some point and they had a view of him that wasn't necessarily who he was. And because they set everything on their view of him, they felt let down by God. Case in point, a lot of people think that well, God is a God of love. And, you know, so 
because they think that God is a God of love. I mean, for 100, 100 plus years now, we as a church society, we all involved in church have been teaching um, that God is a God of love. God is a God of love. And so when people who are trusting and believing in God as a God of love have their feelings hurt, uh, they don't know what to do with it. They don't know where to go with it. And, and they view him as someone who could never allow pain and suffering in their lives. And that's not who God is. That, that's not who he is. And I wrote here that they also associate God with health and wealth. And um, that's how a lot of pastors have built their ministry. And I'm telling you that, you know, they name it and claim it, believe it and receive it. And that's not who God is. And I'm not personally trying to attack anyone's ministry. But when you tell the truth about the Bible, it is the sword that will cut through all of those things that are not of God. God is not here to keep you out of pain. He is not here to keep you away from suffering. He is not here to serve you and make sure you are happy and that you have the new car that you want and that you have the new house that you want. And that is not how God works. And we have been taught in many instances that that is who God is. That is not who God is. And this is the reason we go along with this. And the reason that we believe this is because we don't read his word and we don't have a personal relationship. It goes back to us relying on the church attendance and the pastor sermons to get us through. We don't know what the Bible says for ourselves. And that. And therefore, when God doesn't give us what we want, we walk away. You know, we could be praying for a family member to, to come through, to live, to, to, why not? In the very act of us praying for that family member, we think that, that God is supposed to do this. He's supposed to want all of the Christians to be healthy, wealthy, and living long lives. And that's not who God is. God doesn't always give us what we want. God does what he feels is necessary and what falls within his will. But because we have been conditioned to believe that God is an all loving God and he would never cause pain and he would never cause suffering. We get a false understanding of who God actually is. And we believe things that cause us to walk away when we don't get our way. And that scares me greatly scares me so much it scares me so much and so i decided today that i was going to start with <coughs> with the premise that a lot of people stand on and is that god is this all loving god he's an all loving god especially in the midst of what we're going through right now we're, gonna, we're seeing a lot of people who had many, many more years to live in our ideas and in our eyes and our minds, losing their lives because of a virus that is attacking us. And we, you know, we're not understanding. A lot of people are praying right now and wanting their loved ones to go through and come out of this on the other side and be healthy. And that may happen and it, it may not happen. And it doesn't make a difference whether you're a Christian or not have, or not a Christian. It may happen and it may not happen. And I would just want people to have a real realistic view of who, you know, who God is. And I really believe that we don't have a realistic view of who God is. And so I wanted to take this time to talk about who God is, who the God I've seen in this Bible. Okay. I hear people, I've, been, I've even been asked, you know, why does God allow things like this to happen if he's such an all-loving God? Why would he allow the pain or the hurt? Why wouldn't he stop it? Why would he allow these things to happen? 
And I want to start with the premise of who told you that God is an all loving God. Who told you that? Because the Bible does not say that. That lends credit to the fact that people do not read the Bible. It does say that God is a God of love. But it does not say that that is his overarching principle. That is not why we have the Bible. That is not why he sent his son. Well, it it is why he sent his son. He sent his son so that we would have a way to be saved. He fixed a problem that we were having. We were rebellious people, rebellious children. He looked around and noticed, got all these rebellious people. And how do I get them to a place if they want to be at this place? How do I get them to a place of salvation? And so he sent his son for that. I'm going to point out a little couple of facts. There are probably around 30 or so scriptures in the Bible that talks about God's love. 30 or so scriptures out of 35,000 scriptures. That's less than 0.01% of the Bible that talks about God's love. That to me says that while he does love us and he wants us to know of his love, the purpose of this word is not just about his love. That is not the whole purpose of the Bible. The, the purpose of the Bible is so that we can get to a place of salvation. And that's what I've understood from reading this book and consuming this book. And I think that oftentimes so many people stick solely to God's love to the point that they skip over the righteousness of God. He is a just God. He is going to do what he said he would do. And this Bible is full of things that he has said he will do that are not even considered on a daily basis. The Bible doesn't say that God is going to come and take away suffering from us. Our brother Paul says that When we go through suffering, not if we go through suffering, we will go through suffering. We will suffer. We will suffer. But we should also have our eyes on God throughout those times. But it's kind of hard to put your eyes on someone that you don't know. It's hard to put your eyes on someone that you don't know. So, I'm, I, you know, this is an appeal. This is me coming to people to say to you that there are some good sound preachers out there. There are lots of good sound preachers. But there are so many preachers who are not giving you a whole view of scripture. But in order to be adequately, um, to adequately have knowledge of the Bible, you have to read it for yourself. You got to read it. You got to dive into it. You have to see what God is saying in the Bible about who he is. You can't take and you shouldn't take anyone else's word, solely take anyone else's word without any questions, without any discussions, without anything. You shouldn't do that. You should go to this book and get to know the God of this Bible for yourself. I don't want people to go around believing that God <clears throat> is going to save them from everything because he's God of love. He's not going to allow people to go to hell because the Bible would not talk about hell if it was not so. And I'm, I mean, I feel, I feel, you know, I feel like that we as Christians, we have a real big job to do in making sure that people understand who God is. And we can't keep going around with people thinking that, oh, well, God is a God of love and I can just go out and do whatever it is I want to do on a daily basis. And at the end of my life, blow the smoke back in God's face because I'm going to heaven. That is not what the Bible says. It's not. The ticket to heaven is not free. 
And there are some things that have to be done. And I think that a lot of us don't know what the things are that have to be done. And so we're not doing them. The very first thing we have to do is get into the Bible, read this Bible. We have, we have to, if you've already accepted Christ, then the studying of this word is necessary. You accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And then you turn away, you repent, you turn away. You stop doing the things that you know go directly against God's word. And, and being a new Christian, you may not know all the things that go directly against God, God's word, but you will never know the things that go directly against God's word if you don't read the Bible. You could go to church and you should go to church, but you can go to church and hear preaching. And the pastor is going to preach a subject from the, from the scripture, prayerfully from the scripture and give you a message about those things. But those things may not be personally what you are feeling or going through at the moment. And how do you get to know someone personally? You spend time with them. So you spend time in this book so that you can get right, so that you can know that you know who God is. So if you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you're willing to repent, turn away from what you know is wrong, read this book so you can know what else is wrong. And allow God to work on your heart. Get into a good Bible-based church. Go to Bible study if you can. So that you can get to know what God's word says. Because I am so afraid that so many people have an idea of God that is not who God is. And I don't want anyone to perish. I don't want anyone to live a life on this earth and they don't experience God because they don't know who he ever is and they suffer apart from joy because God gives you joy and he gives you peace and he gives you the ability to go through the suffering with your head held high knowing that he is who he said he is and that even if death is the worst thing you can get from here in this earth salvation is on the other side of it and it is so it is so worth it because it's eternal it lasts forever you'll be forever with God so I want I really want people to try their best to read your Bible to try your best to apply those things that are of God because I know for a fact that that's not happening. And I'm a person that loves to have a good time. I like to tell jokes. I like to be funny. I'm just real down to earth person. But I'm very, very scared person right now. And I'm scared for people who are going to leave this life without God. And there are going to be some people who are going to leave this life without God because they want to leave this life without God. And that's their choice. That's how good God is. He allows you to choose. You don't have to take up with him. And maybe some people that don't want to take up with him now. I'm not doing this to convert anyone. I, I don't believe that people convert people. I believe that the Holy Spirit of God does the conversion. I'm doing this so that anyone who wants to know God can know that they know him. That's it. If you're not interested in um, in God, no. click on the wrong video. Um, I'm talking to people who want to have a better relationship, who want to have a deeper relationship, and who want to have a relationship with God. And so that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to gear my teaching messages whatever towards i don't know what to call it I'm, like i said that's a there's a great amount of um humility in going out to teach something so so big and so vast and so full is god's word i'm gonna do my best 
And I'm putting this on Facebook because I want to be held accountable for it because I want to be really, I want to really be able to help someone who needs help. And if this is on um, YouTube and you see it there and you have a question and you want to ask a question, you can ask any question that you like. And on Facebook also, and I do my best to answer your question um, from a biblical point of view. So that you can know really who God is, you know, and so that you can give your life to God, because I think that this. That's necessary, it's real. So. um, If you watch this to the end, you are a trooper. And, um, and I just want to thank you for watching it to the end. And I'm going to be prayerful that people are going to give their life to God in a massive way, in a big way right now. Especially going through this. And not just for this, but because they're going to allow God to do the work, the change on them, the heart transplant on them. That he can do. I, that I know he can do. I've experienced it for myself. So, uh, thank you guys for tuning in and watching.